here. Yeah, yeah, so I'm I'm if everybody's ready, let's uh, call the meeting to order. And I'm going to ask Blake Tarpley to say our prayer. Let's pray. <laughs> Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given to us. We thank you for all the blessings of life, Father. We thank you for each one in this room and the part they play in the, in the business of this community. We thank you especially, dear Father, for those who help keep us safe, dear Father. We ask you, dear Father, to bless those that uh, serve in our armed forces, those that uh, serve here uh, on this shore and serve on foreign shores, dear Father. Keep them safe, protect them, and help them, dear Father, to come home safely to, back to their families. Thank you, dear Father, again for, for this day. We know it's a day that you've made, and we just ask, dear Father, that uh, you would forgive us of our sins and bless us and help us through this day. Help us, this court, the men around this table, to make decisions that are pleasing in your sight and blessings for the county. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First thing we had, I was going to let Dan, and I, it doesn't look like he made it this morning. He's not from, here, but I, I okay, to speak Matt, Matt. a little bit. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I don't know as much as he, <laughs> <laughs> but um, he'll probably come on in with with more details. But um, the the she um, over here yeah, the camera to see you. Yeah, come over here. Oh, where I want the camera to see. <laughs> <laughs> we got to be Ronnie. Yeah. Ronnie got to be preserved for posterity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, I'm Brown Bennett, and I'm with the uh, Franklin Simpson Community Arts Council, and we've worked really closely a lot with uh, mm -hmm. the gallery on the square and the Franklin Simpson Renaissance, and uh, sometimes we work with tourism. So um, Dan approached all of us to uh, work with him on an event that we would like to propose for Simpson County uh, in June of this year. As most of you know, that uh, Johnny Cash and June Carter were married at the Methodist Church, uh, and uh, we normally would like to do this in the month that they were married, celebrate their anniversary. However, with the, the timing, that's not going to be feasible, so that we uh, would like to propose a June and Johnny Festival uh, Love and Bloom, and we want to have it in June. So, uh, one of the options that we were thinking of um, were to have uh, the actual big event at the, the uh, drive-in. And uh, we're not going to probably have the opportunity to get the people that we would like. I don't know if he talked to who, who we were considering in, in the beginning, but uh, to get the big name max is a lot, a lot of money. And uh, so we're looking at kind of scaling down some and uh, having it in the the downtown area, not per se on the square, but one of the options that Dan had looked at was having it in the parking lot across from the Justice Center. And um, we know that that is used a lot during uh, court sessions, but uh, we were hoping that you would give us the um, go ahead to proceed with a possibility of having the event there. Um, and putting the stage on the uh, the front end there by the Boys and Girls Club and having chairs from there on back. Uh, we would have to block off that portion of Court Street. We would leave the uh, portion of <clears throat> Kentucky from there, to, you know, past the, the jail open, uh, you know, because we know that the, the sheriff's office and the, the jailers would have to come and go. But uh, we would block off that portion of Court Street and have the entrance uh, there. So we would probably have to have that um, particular lot uh, and have the stage and everything put up because we're looking at, at doing it on a, uh, a Saturday and Sunday. So we probably have to have it set up on Friday. Uh, you know, to get it set up uh, and have everything ready. Um, so, you know, we're looking at having 
a bunch of activities the whole week, starting uh, around June the 3rd and ending with the big concerts uh, on Saturday and Sunday. And we've got some, some good names that we, we are pursuing, but we can't do that until we can tell them where we're actually going to have it. So uh, we will work with everybody uh, in the community uh, that would be effective and work with them to make sure that they will not be inconvenienced in any way. Um, so we just was really asking for the approval of, of the fiscal court and of course I'm sure we will have to talk to the jailer and to um, the sheriff to make sure that that wouldn't be anything that would uh, deter anything that they would do. So. Talk to Bill. I, I, Bill and I have talked about it and, and I, uh, we talked <clears throat> about what um, Dan had showed me and kind of the timeline and um, everything and it's it's basically going to be a all weekend they're going to have a concert on the square on Friday night that and then and maybe also I talked to I actually talked to Mark the Tory that it's the uh, kind of looking at booking some of the act and he was even talking about doing like if it was a four o'clock concert down at the Justice Center we might have a smaller act at like noon downtown on the square and it'd just be a whole weekend type deal to bring a lot of uh, uh, a lot of activity and hopefully a lot you know be a, a good deal for the downtown well and that's around the same time as Bonnaroo so we are hoping that if we get the right uh, facility or the right place and the right acts that we will pull a lot of those people uh, it's know. also right around CMA Fest. Yeah, together. absolutely. Right. Yeah. So this happens to be right around Exactly. <laughs> so we're, we're hoping that we can draw a lot of people. Uh, and of course, it's uh, Mark has come up with a really good group of people. And right. I don't know if he told you right. any of the ones that they were thinking of. And I don't want to put that out there. It's, it's kind of time sensitive because one of them, one of the biggest names, has given them a deadline this Friday mm -hmm. to let them know whether. Uh, and it's Charlie Daniels, and, and so um, he's given them a deadline of this Friday that, that if if we book him this week, then or if they book him this week, we're not. I mean, we're all we're doing is allowing them to have a parking lot, and and I personally am all for it. But the only well, thing I would like to add is the parking lot north of the Court of Justice Center right now could or could not be in the middle of a capital project. And if it is, that, that parking lot is going to be construction trailer and it's going to be completely fenced off. So the north of the Justice Center? Yeah, the laundry right adjacent to it. Yeah. We, we thought about possibly having vendors there, but that if that's going to be used, then possibility of closing just that portion of Kentucky Street for the vendors, you know, like they do when the, when the uh, car, show. car show is happening, yeah. uh, that would be another feasibility. And you still wouldn't block off getting to the the jail or the, the sheriff's office uh, and, just bar and bar the other thing would be just to let Mary Thomas know because they can do some you know finagling on the court because they do have family court some on Friday and some other courts on Friday right. so, so if you're sure. going to set up you might give what, a heads what, up what, which date is this Barney? Uh, it's going to be on the uh, the 9th and 10th of June is that what he said I thought it said 2nd and 3rd oh so he's doing um, it the, the well, we're talking about having it a uh, whole week. So, did he give you the... I, I, I actually have it. Yeah. Let me, I'll be right back. We're talking about a whole weeks of activities, um, the right. um, starting with the, the weekend before and then ending. So, we had those two weekends available to offer to the big stars. That That's the reason I hesitate to... to uh, Amy say which one? Amy Alex called me last night. Okay. She said the second or third. Okay. okay. But well, if it's the eighth and not, it's the ninth and tenth, then I need to talk to Judge Harrison. Okay. We can probably do something on that. Uh, we have jury trials the second Friday of the month customarily, okay. and I'll have to. I mean, that shouldn't be that big a deal this far out, but it's something to let we deal we with. Talking either or, depending on when it will be available, because one of the other things that we're doing, I don't know if I've told you, but we. We also want to try to have a break a Guinness Book of World Records of having uh, guitar players come and play a song on an acoustic guitar. There he is. There's the man of the hour. I got you started, Dan. All right. Come on. You can 
finish up? <laughs> Might let him have his coat and hat off first. <laughs> Stay a while. Yeah, I'd have been here sooner, but I had to park on May Holland Hill and walk the rest of the way. <laughs> and believe that, I got some real estate today. So. Well, I don't know what to. We're brand. pretty up to speed. We're, uh, we're not sure of the date. But. The date is the weekend of June 2nd and 3rd. Okay. We, we picked that date because that is the weekend before the Bonnaroo Music Festival and the uh, CMA Fest in Nashville, and we think we might be able to get some uh, John Cash fans who are going to one of those events to come up here for this. Uh, who else needs? I think we Anybody got one? Yeah. Uh, as I'm sure you know, the wedding of Johnny and June took place in uh, 1968. Fifty years ago, it uh, made national headlines. It was in newspapers everywhere, not just the Franklin favorite, as in your packet there. And uh, ever since, people have been coming here to see the church where they got married. In fact, uh, Jennifer Tuttle tells me that a couple from the Netherlands in Northern Europe is, is coming to Franklin on June the 6th of this year to get married in the same church as Johnny and June. Because of the, the uh, significance of this uh, for our, our town history as well as the uh, 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 national cultural importance of it. We applied last uh, fall to the Kentucky Historical Society for a, a permanent historical marker to commemorate uh, Johnny and June's wedding and also the wedding 20 years earlier of uh, country music uh, star Kitty Wells and her husband Johnny Wright who came up here got a marriage license and got married in the courthouse by the county judge at that time. There was a quirk in the marriage laws. Uh, Tennessee required a three-day waiting period from the time you bought a license until a minister could, uh, or a justice of the peace could marry you. Kentucky did not. So Johnny and June got here about 8.30 in the morning, went to Bud Grove's office right over here next door, got a license, uh, went to Dr. Beasley's office to have the necessary blood test required at that time. Uh, Johnny went to Thompson's flower shop and bought flowers. Uh, June went to Moore's drugstore. Meantime, Ann Grohl and Ms. Roby and Judy Key were all on the phone telling people, you'll never guess who I sold the marriage license to this morning. <laughs> And the Reverend Leslie Chapman uh, encountered them and, and offered the Methodist Church as a site for the wedding. And that was set for 2 o'clock. So by 2 o'clock, uh, several people in town showed up and they were allowed to sit up in the balcony and watch the wedding. I, I was not so fortunate. I was in school, but I had a cousin who had a co-op job with him. And he got out at 1 o'clock. And so... He and his boss and everybody at Lyons Market over here on Kentucky Street closed up and went to the wedding. <laughs> so I want to ask you two things today. One, I, I want to ask your uh, consent to place the marker in the area shown in your packet there uh, on the courthouse side of College Street so that uh, visitors can uh, stand beside the marker, have their picture made in front of the church. The uh, Historical Society will not erect a marker through uh, concrete or asphalt, and it needs to be grass, and I think it would work better on uh, this side of the street. So you can see that's not the exact wording in there, but it shows you where we're talking about putting it. To uh, commemorate the event, we're wanting to have a 50th anniversary celebration 
and uh, we want to bring in some A-list talent to perform here. And the courthouse yard itself doesn't lend itself to uh, putting down uh, rows of seats and cordoning off an area where you can uh, take up tickets. But I think we have an area now that does, and that's lo that large parking lot across from the Justice Center that runs the entire length of the block now. And we took some measurements and did some calculations. That's the last uh, page in your packet there. And uh, we should be able to get uh, 2,500 people in that area if you would give us permission to uh, use it that weekend. And we would probably need at least partial access for a few weekdays leading up to that weekend to get stage equipment and things set up. Uh, we'd have it all down and gone by the time the Justice Center opened for business the following Monday morning. So that's, uh, that's what brings me out on this snowy day today because uh, we need to know if we can use the venue so we can go ahead and firm up the arrangements with uh, artists and uh, production people. Do, uh, I think it's a good idea. I do too. Uh, do we need to take action, like uh, get a motion and a vote on this, Pam, to? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you probably, if you're interested, you're probably going to do two. One involving the, the site, the marker, and the second one involving the use of the parking area. Uh, Does the city need to agree to close Court Street? Do they have to, do they have, to have a vote on that? Do I actually yes. discussed this with Scott Crabtree some after Dan and I met last week, and and he said that the city was, was he felt like the city would be all on board with, with, you know, kind of oh. trying to make any accommodations that we could um, to make this happen. So, um, the only thing I would say, add about the monument is whenever, <clears throat> whatever happens with it, Bill has got some drawings of water lines and sprinkler system and everything that's on this lawn out here. Somebody might, needs to make sure that, that, that they don't hit any water lines when it's kind of got to go through a little bit of a process to make sure that, that it's placed in a proper place where it won't interfere with our sprinkler system and so forth. So The uh, uh, state uh, highway department installs those okay. and one of the uh, yeah, requirements is that you call that. Bud and get everything marked. Right. But if there are other things that aren't included under what Bud covers, we want to. That wouldn't. That wouldn't be a, too. Well, the irrigation system probably wouldn't. Wouldn't be into the water district's um, line. So yeah, we would just have to kind of look at our. We got drawings of where they're at. Yeah. yeah we don't have any. If they're putting it between the sidewalk and the outer curb, we don't have anything at the. No, it's not between the sidewalk and the curb. It's it's uh. It's on the grass. It's on the grass. The just. Well, it is grass, but it, it's right there. The grass is between the sidewalk we'll and the curb. It's right on the corner, this corner, where the sidewalk and the so, the two okay. sidewalks go. Looking straight. We just have to check for sprinklers there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not in the lawn proper. It's in that strip of grass between the sidewalk. And oh, the it is. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. At least that that's what we're proposing. This it, picture uh, shows it in the grass. Ultimately, it will be up to you. No, I'm just saying I think you would need two separate right. roads. You couldn't do them both at the same time. If you want to take the other one up later, that's fine. I'm just saying I don't think you can do an omnibus. Well, it had been, was it last year when they were wanting to put a marker out here on this street for a lady or something? Yeah, they, Mrs. They Moore. They couldn't do it. Uh, there was something that came up on that that, that they couldn't do the marker out there. I just I didn't know maybe if we needed more information on this marker before. I don't have, really have a problem with it, but we need you know 
with, now we're talking about the irrigation line. You know, the, we're talking about the state. This, we're this about little ring right here has got it in the corner of the yard right by the, the light pole. Is it, are, are you saying that it was actually going to be across the sidewalk in the little grass strip? Yeah. That's where I took it is going to be. Well, uh, that, uh, where, where it's, it's placed there is uh, in the grass between, there's about six feet of grass between the sidewalk and the street where those cherry trees right. uh, are. Uh, oh, okay. That, you know, I, we'll welcome your help in determining the exact spot and and once we find all the anything oh, that is that's, underground, that's not the there, um, concrete out there. The uh, the marker from Mrs. Moore, who served in the state house, uh, I know Sergio Cargill worked on that, and both the city and county uh, were involved in that, and obviously we'll need the city's consent too. I think so, it was also because this, that was the state. That part of the road, <coughs> you know, the state was involved a little bit in that. I, I'm just, I'm wondering, is the Methodist Church said you couldn't put it in front of the church? Can't go through concrete, apparently. No, we, we haven't asked them specifically, but, you know, all the area in front of the church is concrete and steps. It's got those pipes. And, it's got and those having it to on this pipe. side would make a better picture and we want people to drive up here get their right. picture made that marker with the church in the background if we were right up against the church in their landscaping you wouldn't see as much okay. of the church in your picture but uh, if if uh, if you all were were on the record as, as uh, having no objection to the marker provided that any other necessary approvals were obtained and that uh, 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 any underground utilities were avoided, you know, that, that would have you on record as being okay in principle and right. we could go from there. I don't mind making a motion to go ahead with the marker pending, you know, location of water lines and, and the actual location of the site. Right. Got a motion? Second. Bobby. Have a vote. Blake Tarpley? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Marty Chandler? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Jenny Spears? Yes. <coughs> and now I'll need a motion to uh, give permission to use the Justice Center parking lot. This festival. For a, to host a music festival the weekend of June second June second and third. Can I ask one question? Yes, sir. This is not the final layout of the venue. No, no. That, that was estimated how many people. Yeah. Yeah. The well, and that and that parking lot where they've got vendors right there is the one that Bill's talking about. It and it, it the Justice Center renovation may not even be started by then. Yeah. It you know, who knows, but. We have to. We've we've told Dan and that, that 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 there's a very good likelihood that that parking lot will be just off limits. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Judge, we talked about that on our our uh, committee, and uh, at uh, the car show some years, the city has agreed to close Kentucky from Main Street to Court Street, so those vendors could perhaps. Right move into that street if the city agreed to close that block as well as a quick yes. street block. Right. Right. The only thing I would, I think you ought to go also down and uh, talk to the people at the Purdue at the Grand Elevator. Mm -hmm. Jenny 2nd and 3rd is right at the start of wheat harvest. Yeah, I and thought about that. they may want to make accommodations to have uh, trucks come in a different way because the weather Joy the way CSX has done this railroad track up here, you can't really cross a railroad track with a semi and a hop bottle. So yeah. a lot of them come down and turn on the cedar Enjoy the week and then cut in and go in that they way. Don't come down so they way. may want they may want to make some kind of different arrangement, you know, let right. the farmers know to go in a different area or something to, because I mean that's their business and their, their busy time. But 
But when you go in, they're almost going to have to go out Cedar Street and in to get onto the scales. So I don't know. Just you might want to give them a yeah, I'll go down there and, and and talk to them about that. And mm -hmm. you know, I, we did think about that. Uh, and I was thinking, well, they can come in up up close to the railroad. But like you say, the crossing situation there. Yeah. Might want to think about putting the beer garden and the bourbon tents on the side close to the general and the sheriff's office. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that, uh, that uh, uh, Scott Crabtree, the city attorney, said that that, that that was something that would have to be would have to be permitted and things like that. So that needs, that needs to be set kind of set in motion. But uh, I like the position, you know, easy access, yeah. one stop shopping. Yeah, I mean, just walk I mean, across the. At parking spaces or parking area, do you think it would take? I mean, I, I'm I'm sure that it'll take up everything on the square and uh, maybe down to the Goodnight House and different things. I mean, how many? How much do you anticipate the parking to be? Well, if you've got two thousand people, potentially you could have a thousand cars. And I was going to ask uh, Kenton how many parking spaces, line spaces that are around the square. I was also wondering if we would be able to use that lot across from the library where the old hospital was torn down. That's a pretty big area now, some of it with pavement, some of it with grass, but uh, uh, that could be a parking area. Uh, it was suggested that we might have talked to the Baptist Church about in their parking lot. Sam could sp sell some spots down there in his office. Well, uh, probably so. At that time, you're the farmer's market's open on Saturdays, but they're not open on Sundays. Okay. So the farmer's market could be an area I think that could be used as parking, too. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. pretty big. Yeah, uh, need to figure out how many spaces and probably have somebody stationed down there to organize the parking so it's not right. a hazard. But yeah. Right. I think, yeah. well, as far as the fiscal court's concerned, our, our kind of um, concern mm -hmm. is, is the parking lot and, and whether we're going to grant permission for them to use it. And I, I personally think we should try to promote that because it's, you think about all the investors, the people that are investing in downtown Franklin and the vendors and businesses, uh, uh, something like this, if it becomes an annual deal, it, it could make or break a business. And Marty, make motion. Larry oh, Landoff, second. To allow them to use the parking lot. Yep. Yeah. On Saturday, do they put a date on there? It's, Saturday, yeah, it's Saturday, Saturday, and, Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, June 3rd. And if, if, if you think it'd be all right for us to have some access to at least a portion of it during the weekdays preceding that, we might need to do a little. We'll have to check Thursday and Friday. That'll be, uh, we'll have to work with it. With the court system down there. And, yeah, I'll and, talk uh, to the judges and the right, sheriff. Right, right. And, and yeah. Sam may know this, but we actually did one smaller parking lot across and the one north of it, if it's going to be available, that is, that is like under AOC. So, and the the other one, it actually the county, the AOC has no. Yeah, the AOC one on the corner of uh, Cedar and Fort. That's AOC, that's the states. And then, of course, a little lot, if the capital project's not underway by that time, as the judge said, who knows, it may or may not be. So that's also under AOC control. Right, so I, I, what I'm getting at, as far as liability and stuff like that, for those two parking lots, may be different from the one that we actually control, which would be the other one. So I don't know if, you know, contact would need to be made with the AOC. So this is an AOC parking lot? Yeah. That's by the Justice Center right. and that northern part there, which used to be the old gas station that we got originally for <coughs> well, parking. It was, I, it was bought with state money. That'd be the only question that would arise if AOC. I need to, you know, we're make a note to that. discuss that. Well, in technically that. speaking, they're leasing it, but I mean, they're it, they, they'd make that call. I'll, we've got a meeting. I've got a meeting in February with the uh, AOC representative and and uh, Judge Crocker. And I'll just I'll bring that up then, too. 
Right. And I, I haven't been to see Judge Crocker or Harrison or them yet, but assuming we got a favorable response today, yes. I perhaps will have talked to them before your February meeting. Okay. Let them know what we're planning. All right. Need a vote? Marty Chandler? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Blake Parkway? Yes. Jamie Spears? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Very much. I'll discuss the issue of the Methodist Church parking lot at our next leadership council meeting because that's where it'll have to be approved. Okay. And I'm on that council as chairman of Deacon, so I'll uh, okay. make sure we talk about that on our next meeting. All right. Now, if I could ask for a five minute recess for y'all to push me out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Uh, next. Uh, the county clerk, Jolene Thurman, you know, kind of finalize her budget. And hey, gentlemen, I think you have everything in front of you, the changes that we made. I think we cut about 30000 off of it. Is the only for your comparison I see. That's the newest proposed. Um, let me see. Go down. That's that's our income part right down here. This you don't know. Um, I've got personal work here. I've got Clark official expense budget, Clark DLG budget, the and the four year comparison. comparison should be is the new the one is it Five in the all numbers. Right. Is the their new one on their on their portal? Yes. Yeah, thirty two. There you go. No, that's different. Maybe if what's that called on here when you go up four years per person? Yeah, they would all right. Yeah. Um basically what what we did was uh on Jolene and I worked on on her budget was we basically froze all raises and and took um, basically trending expenses and we made some adjustments some of them we increased some of them we reduced but uh, her um, pension liability if I recall went up about twenty nine thousand dollars and um, her basically that's that's where most of our increase was in um, in, in her budget and the liability to the court to the county has gone up about ten thousand um, dollars so uh, the the final number on her budget ends up is <coughs> five six oh one six fifty eight if you'll go to the uh, county clerk's salary line which is eighty three nine ten to the far right which is right under payments to the county attorney all the rest of the all the numbers above that are just in and out numbers they're their tax revenue tax expenditures that are mandated um, the only place that there was any adjustments available were from there down um, probably the biggest increase in your budget from your last year's actual number was not a change in the budget number it was a change in the actual number because you had a a full time, a now full time employee yes. <coughs> that was only in last year's actual yes. for about eight months. Uh, seven to eight seven months. months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's about five months salary that is not uh, reflected in her actual number from last year. So that's that's where the largest increase is in from her actual to her budgeted number. And I guess the biggest thing for for our for the courts from the court standpoint is 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 our contribution to the clerk's budget 
went from about 60,000 to 71,000. Well, it actually is at 65,683. Okay. With the other cuts that we made, I think okay. offset it. Okay. So. Yeah, 60,000. Was there any increase in the, uh, the health insurance? So we may have to do a budget amendment well, uh, if they come in. Uh, well, like we've always done with the sheriff and the and the clerk, um, based on any changes that we get when we start putting together the fiscal year budget, we make those changes. Okay. Um, we we yeah. I, we don't have to have a budget amendment. We just put in the right numbers once we get it. Okay. I talked to Kevin Harding a week or so ago. He said they just don't have good enough numbers to show us anything. All right. Any, any questions about anything else? I'll move to approve the budget. Blake Tarpley made a motion. I second. Larry Randolph, second. <coughs> a vote. Uh, we can actually make sure the minutes reflect these two. This is kind of mirrors last year's. You'll see the clerk's motions because she'll have two different budgets we're approving. Okay. One of them is for the deputies and one of pay, and the other is for the actual budget itself. All right. I need a, a motion to approve the county clerk's fee budget as presented with projected net fees to be remitted from to the county treasurer in the amount of $568,943. Is that? That's not the one I just... That's the motion you just made. Okay. We can, I'll make that same motion. Do we need to approve the budget and then approve the salary? Yes. So well, we there's two the budgets. We have the DLG. expense budget, we have a DLG budget, and we have the deputies and salaries maximum pay. We have three. Pay. Yeah. On that one, we'll have three. Yeah, there's, there's three. Well, I moved to approve the budget we just looked at. <laughs> <laughs> well, that budget we just looked at is three different parts. Oh, okay. It, it, okay. It's it's a it's a fees. It's the it's the in and out fees that is. But we will do three different. Budgets. We'll do three different motions. Yeah. I've got to get the. Uh, I spoke with the okay. this morning, and I've got to get that budget into them today. I moved awesome. to approve budget number one. We did. Okay. And I did them. Yeah. Okay. okay. Larry Randolph, second. Blake Tarpley. Yes. Randolph? Yes. Marty Chandler? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Jamie Spears? Yes. Now we're, uh, we need a motion to approve the clerk's official expense budget, which present, are presented in amount of 634626 And that includes the clerk's salary on down and all those figures that the fiscal court will, that's the budget we go by. Right. I'll second that one. Bobby Bush and Blake Tarley. Need a vote. Bobby Bush? Yes. Blake Tarley? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Marty Chandler? Yes. Jamie Spears? Yes. The next one, pursuant to KRS 64.530, Section 3. Approve annual order setting maximum county clerk's 2018 lump sum of 398308 for full-time deputies and assistant salaries and wages, health care insurance or health insurance, employer match social security, Medicare, and employer match retirement. This is basically us approving her deputy salaries. So Marty Chandler? I'll second. Larry Randolph. A vote. Marty Chandler? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Blake Tarpley? Yes. Jimmy Spears? Yes. Thank you, Thank gentlemen. You. I Thank appreciate you, it. Mm -hmm. sorry, sorry you got written up. That's all right. I'm going to sign off on that for me. I can email it today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we will need a copy. I'll get to you.
It's Mr. Hobson. Yes, ready to present his amended budget. I am, gentlemen. Us and fiscal court work together and retain some agreement on a budget that I think can take care of the sheriff's office and not interfere with services to the community. There's some stuff long term that will hamper, but not hamper to the extent that we can't get through it. Uh, I do want to make one comment about last week. Keith, if, if you could get with me after this meeting, Franklin Favor had that when I presented my budget, and it was uh, Ethan was the first time here. I did say something about a calendar year, fiscal year budget, and it took a little while for raises to catch up, and that was part of the increase. And then the next hour I talked about the retirement system was the bulk, but the article read that it was $150,000 in deputy salary increases, which definitely <laughs> was not what we talked about. Uh, I won't go into that unless y'all have questions about that, but I think we were all on board with what was uh, driving us up. Quickly just going through our uh, budget, uh, on the deputy salaries, that's the big place we were able to uh, cut back. We went from, I think it was 733 that had been proposed down to about 705. Uh, we were able to do that because there was a 3% I'd put in there. If you remember back over your conversations through the year, uh, when there was talk that a pension plan might come in, there was a talk about employees paying 3% and y'all wanted that not to happen if it did. The pension plan did not come in, so rates went way up. Yeah, it wasn't going to be both. So we could take that 3% off because the rates went up, pension plan didn't come through. If they come up with a pension plan down the road, which we have no control of, then the rates should drop, so there should still be money there if something had to happen. <coughs> anyway, we took out the 3%. I usually pad that a little bit with about $10,000 that we also took out. Why do I pad it $10,000? That little Johnny Cash thing you got sitting right there, we had not talked about it. It's not for this fiscal year, but I'm assuming they're going to want some deputies over there because that's all right in the courthouse area. That's where I use that padded money. But we took that out, and uh, this is a different year. I think we'll be fine. Uh, that was the bulk of our savings. As you come down to employee benefits, it would drop each one of those lines just a little bit. Why? Because all those are based off of your gross salaries, uh, Social Security and all that dropped a little bit. Uh, our spending stayed about the same. We did, uh, I talked with Jamie because you're going to see we took out the vehicles. Vehicle maintenance we raised, a little bit. we raised it from 25 to 29. We did that because I expect more stuff to happen to the vehicle. I want to add something on the vehicle thing. Uh, um, as you all know, um, the sheriff's fleet and, and everything and, and them having the ability to um, respond in a timely manner to things in the county is, is critical. Um, I think it's important that he maintains a, um, an adequate fleet of vehicles. But in our conversation with the pension situation that the state has handed us, um, it's one of the spots where we thought we could make a cut um, that we could kind of just get by for a year. I also told the sheriff that if the the state comes back with a budget that um, our pension liability is not as severe and there's money in the budget that we can we can put that <coughs> back in his budget in July when we do our our. Um, when we have more information. So I just wanted to get that kind of on the record that we yes. had that discussion. And, and, and the judge hit it, hit it dead on. This is a unique year. I understand we've got financial woes going on, not, not because of anything that has been done here, just with the state pension system. Uh, we've taken out any vehicles for this year. Realize that little conversation I had about a fiscal court budget going, or a calendar budget going, it's about two years before we'll be ordering any vehicles, but we can make it that long. I say that because we've got six months to go before this budget starts. Uh, then you go through this budget as year long. I'll be back here hopefully next January.
doing another budget, and if y'all say buy a vehicle, it takes about four or five months to order a vehicle and get it in. So we're okay. I would I'd tell you honestly, if I thought we were just going to fall apart, it would damage the fleet because it'll be a little bit older. But we'll be fine. We'll be got to give us the year to see where we're standing on everything. So that's where all the uh, savings and the trimmings came down to. Uh, any questions about any of that? And if, so if anybody sees, you may mention that you were going to buy it. I'm not promising anything, Murray, but yes, I said that and that's my plan. I just want the only reason I say that is so if somebody sees that they know that that's from your side. Yeah, that's not coming from the county. You're exactly right. Uh, the only thing I have in my control, and I don't hide it from you guys, if you ever want to know what I've got in there, I'll tell you what's in there. Uh, we have a drug account, and that's from drug seizures, uh, forfeitures that may come through. Sounds real good that if there's a little bit of money that was seized and forfeited to us to say go into our drug account. And over four years, I've saved up about $30,000 is what's in there. And I'm not going to spend it all, but I'll take 22, 23 of it and buy a couple of uh, mid-grade vehicles, maybe got 50, 60,000 miles on it. And lengthy conversation if anybody wants to hear about it, but yes. Well, the only reason I mention that is we're on camera. And we just said we're going to buy vehicles, or you know, you took vehicles out. County's not they, buying us any vehicles. But if somebody sees vehicles, <laughs> new vehicles down at the office, or different vehicles, they don't know where they come from. That's well, that, the reason. I these new vehicles I'm talking about are with the camera, and I'm not being a smart up, will be somewhere between a 2009 and a 2011 Crown Vic used that we're buying somewhere. Basically. And, and don't get us where we're going. I, I don't have any problem with that. And I may come across a truck or something. If I do, uh, but yes, physical court's not buying any vehicles. That's from a savings account that we have at the sheriff's office for such purposes. Basically, they'll be new to you. Yeah, they'll, they'll get the deputies where they need to go if we need them, yes. New to, new to you. Any other questions? But I think this gets us through the year uh, until we can see what's going to happen. Also, the judge and I talked. Uh, there was a question about growth at the sheriff's office, and I want to address that with y'all. The four years, five years now that I've stood before you, each year I've told you exactly what I'm trying to do with the sheriff's office and where it's going. <coughs> the sheriff's office is where I think it needs to be at this point. We're not trying to grow the sheriff's office larger. I think this year kind of got us to where we needed to be. My goal now is to do things better that we've already started internally that doesn't cost anything. It's to retain people because as articles I've showed you, it's hard to find police officers. And to maintain what we're doing. So that's where we're at. We're not really in a growing stage anymore. We've kind of got to where we need to be. Any other questions? Thank you. I think a key number that, that the court needs to look at in, in the sheriff's budget is, is, um, is his total budget increase is about 100, well, his total pension liability for HD and non-HD employees is $110,756. His budget is going up, what is it, about a, um, yeah, well, it's going up, his total budget number uh, is going up from his actual um, about 109000 Five, it's it's all is he we've actually the sheriff has cut his budget minus the pension four hundred dollars is what it amounts to so the, this total increase in, in his budget of a hundred of one hundred ten thousand seven fifty six is strictly pension liability and is, do we have two or three mo uh, two uh, two you see them at the top of your sheet that yeah, same sheet. That Oh, okay, here we go. All right. Uh, I need a motion to approve the 2018 calendar year budget of $1,569,969 as presented by Sheriff Jerry D. Hobson with 854419 of that amount being fiscal court contribution. So, Larry Randolph. Second. Second by Blake. Take a vote. Larry Randolph. Yes. Blake Tarkley. Yes. Marty Chandler. Yes. Bobby Bush. Yes. Jamie Spears. Yes. 
pursuant to KRS 64.530-3, approval annual order setting maximum sheriff's lump sum of $1,254,950 for full-time deputy salaries, other salaries, health insurance, their employer, max social security, retirement, and hazard, hazard, duty, <coughs> hazard duty retirement. So moved. Bobby Bush. Second. Second, Marty Chandler. And we'll take a vote. Bobby Bush. Yes. Marty Chandler. Yes. Larry Randolph. Yes. Blake Tarquin. Yes. James Spears. Yes. Thank you all. Both of you appreciate all the flexibility. <laughs> Next thing on the agenda, we need to uh, review and approve the minutes from the January 2nd regular meeting. Do I need to mention the one little change we made from? That's fine. I mean, the, the court knew that. You're talking about the. Uh, um, where I voted, yes. I voted to approve the minutes in the last <laughs> meeting, and I, I wasn't in the prior meeting, so we had to we had to uh, amend. You abstained. Yes, you abstained. I abstained. Yeah. Yeah. Change his vote to abstain. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that was the only the only. Uh, I thought I thought we did pretty good for that to be done. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> that's better than average. <laughs> but commotion will approve the minutes. Second, with uh, that change. As yeah, with the change. Second. Larry Randolph made a motion. Bobby Bush seconded. Larry Randolph? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Marty Chandler? Yes. Blake Tarpley? Yes. James Spears? Yes. And um, the next thing I have one to review and approve a board appointment, <coughs> which is Chad Kono to the planning and zoning for a new four year term. So moved. Marty? Second. Blake Tarpley made second. Marty Chandler? Yes. Blake Tarpley? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Mm -hmm. Jenny Spears? Yes. <coughs> and then. have a, a surety bond um, I, I think that the court has to approve that uh, me being added to the the bond or being bonded by a motion we approve the bond Sorry. Larry Randolph made the motion Bobby Bush seconded Yes. Bobby Bush. Yes. Marty Chandler. Yes. Blake Parkley. Yes. Jenna Spears. Yes. Are we passing number three? <coughs> uh, no, we're gonna we're gonna table that for later so discussions. We're, pass, we're passing it. But we're not. We're passing. It passing over. on it. Yes, we're gonna pass over uh, the the IT consulting agreement. Yes. <coughs> um, there's a correction of. Um, Approval or review of the correction man or program MOA. It's basically um, Judge Crocker has a program to um, rehabilitation. What, what, what exactly is that called? Is that the one where they? Where she the, basically we have a grant. They, we have a grant, and they run it through us for. Right. Payment purposes to hire, hire, to hire, hire Carmen people. Carmen Mata. We've been doing she's it. Been, most, we, yeah, she's already been. approved one to hire her. This is just they got some more grant money, so they're going to give her a raise. Okay. It's just a it's a formality, a basically, to new, new agreement. Just a way of funneling through. That that's a pastor. Right? Pastor. Yeah. Right. So vote. Marty Chandler, my motion. Second. Blake Tarpley, second. Yes. Mike Tarpley? Yes. 
Bobby Yes. Larry Randolph. Yes. James Spears. Yes. Um, the next thing on the agenda is the uh, emergency management director's job description. Robert, um, has, do you want to speak on that or do you I just want to? for just a second. Okay. Basically what it amounts to is Kentucky Emergency Management, the parent organization at the state for emergency management, requires us to uh, keep our job descriptions up to date and whatnot with uh, Judge Spears coming on and with the election happening and, and the fact that my old job description was for a part-time spot. I thought now would be a pertinent time to, to do an update on it to get everything current. So. so what changes are in this from what it was? Nothing except a whole bunch more words. <laughs> you didn't do a very good job of making it nice enough. <laughs> <laughs> the main line in there is where it says it's not all inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, it's, 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 it's kind of laying out that he is full-time and not part-time. Yeah. That, that was the major part of it. Right. There's, I put a lot more description in there than we had before. Move with proof. Blake made a motion to approve. Bobby Bush, second. I'll go to the side. I have heard a lot of people. You've done an excellent mm -hmm. job with your job, and I've heard a lot of people comment about how they're more aware of things than what they were in the past. And, you know, the, the calls you make and first classes alert. you've been given and all that. And yeah. uh, people in the community are really noticing. The first alert seems to be a lot more. Seems we get a lot more bang for our buck than we had in the previous one. Yeah. Well, I'm getting some complaints that it's too effective. Too effective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every, every and hour, that, hour throughout the night. And I, I will say that we that can be adjusted. We can. Well, no, I mean anything can be tinkered with, but I mean it yeah, can be adjusted it, individually. You kept telling me there's a winter storm out, and I'm like, yep, sure is. <laughs> well, I can get that up there right now. It's not pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's cold as I'll get out. It's really cold. Thank like you, weren't the forecast. <laughs> I depend on my weather rock a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, ma'am. Mike Tarkley. Yes. Bobby Bush. Yes. Marty Chandler. Yes. Larry Randolph. Yes. James Spears. Yes. Um, next thing on the agenda are the uh, to review and approve the transfers. Um, do we need to, Nicole, do we need to talk about the jail transfer right now? Or? Oh, no, that'll be separate. That's a cash transfer. It'll be a separate motion. Okay, all right. This is your just basic budget, transfer. budget transfers. Need a motion to Bobby, Bobby Bush. What, buddy? Yeah. Larry Randolph. Bobby Bush. Yes. Larry Randolph. Yes. Marty Chandler. Yes. Blake Tarpley. Yes. Jamie Spears. Yes. And then um, review the claims. Go ahead. Let's go ahead and do that cash transfer. Okay. Sure. Um, for the jail. That yeah. Fund cash We've got a uh, Nicole will bring us up to speed on that real quick on on the uh, a transfer for the jails. Payroll. The total is um, actually going to be that eighty one thousand four eighty one. That is what is um, over and above our debt service. Um, we did hold in there the money that we will have to have to make sure our debt service um, payments are still made um, but we are had a little strength um, as years passed where the cash fund is low and we are expected based on timing to be getting a class D payment this week but again we have not heard anything from the state um, and nothing showing in the bank account so we do have payroll this week which is the biggest concern and of course you all do have claims um, that you'll be approving here in the next bit um, but we just wanted to try to have some measures in place so that we are able to at least make payroll on Friday. 
and hopefully we hear from the state. And if Brent wants to add anything, he's here. Yeah, I'm a little concerned about hearing from the state because of the other situation they're having what we're having. They may not have anyone there to write for text right now. Uh, got a text into them right now. I haven't heard back. Uh, again, this is a regular schedule of budget transfers and budget is already, so it's not like additional money or anything. But I think it's prudent to go ahead and make that transfer today so we have something to work with. How much is left after this that can be a regular scheduled budget transfer? Yeah. Matthew. We just have our, the money that's held in there when our debt service comes available for payment. We got the money budgeted for that in order to make that payment, but we don't have anything over and above. That. So what happens if this happens again? Um, we can't make payroll. Yeah. We may have to come back and make a budget amendment or something along that line, but we can, we can always utilize that. I received invoice reconciliation today, which means we should get that in the next day or two. What is that? The, I just got a text that we received our invoice reconciliation. It's not hard. From the class D? From the class D. So it should be coming in the next couple days. We just got it. Well, and in that case, if we do get the class D money by Friday or Thursday, hopefully, you all will be approving this, but we will not do the cash transfer. If the money comes in and we have enough cash. This is basically an emergency yeah. situation. Kind of we're, we're trying to put measures in place so we can we can write checks we Friday. Have $260 some thousand dollars coming. It's just right. we were concerned right. with whether they might even get it. So if you get the check. If we morning, get the check, morning, we, this, morning, this, it will not. No. Okay. Well, I'll move we approve it Blake, okay. Bobby Bush seconded. <clears throat> Blake Tarpley? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Marty Chandler? Yes. I reviewed the claims. <coughs> Need a motion to accept the claims. <coughs> Marty Chandler, second, Blake, Blake Tarpley. I do have one question. All right. Just on uh, like fuel for the building, the building inspector's got WEX Bank. What exactly is that? Well, the Fleet One has been bought out by the WEX. Gotcha. Okay. So That's what I thought, a, but yeah. I wasn't sure. It's all the same kind of deal. We're just okay. different company. We're having the right check. And that's just everything else I had, so that uh -huh. was it. That was new. Marty Chandler? Yes. Blake Tarpley? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Jamie Spears? Yes. Are we just reviewing the December financial statements or do we have to we have yeah, approve it? We've got to approve it subject to audit. I have a motion uh, by Blake and a second by Bobby. <coughs> Blake Tarpley? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Marty Chandler? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Jamie Spears? Yes. On the reports, um, the only thing I have uh, that we need to consider, and we don't have to take any action on it today, is um, Kenton Powell and I have met and 
discussed a joint meeting, um, sch scheduling a joint meeting, city commission and the court on March 6th at noon, which will follow our regularly scheduled court meeting. And they um, graciously agreed or, or volunteered to supply us with lunch after our fiscal court meeting that morning we'll have a recess go to city hall have lunch and then have a meeting at noon with the the city commissioners and the gist of that meeting is going to be uh, reviewing their findings from um, a planning and zoning consultant that they have um, hired and they want to they want to discuss any changes or um, things like that to, to the planning and zoning regs in that meeting. So just just something to, to look at if you can look and put it in your schedules and later we can future come back and kind of put that you know in the schedule as a hard date but but I just wanted everybody to to, to write that down and, and be thinking about it if, if there's any conflict so is that the only item they're talking about? Do what? Is that the only item they're talking about? Uh, as far as I know, um, it, it, that's the main thing that they're, they have, they have hired uh, a consultant that, that they're paying, and they're paying him through March 31st, so they want to go ahead sometime in March while he's still around to uh, um, have that meeting where he can present his findings to us. I'm not too sure we don't need to discuss the 911 fund when we have that meeting. Well, that'd be a good. I mean, everybody needs to, if we have some concerns, we can talk about them between now and then with some of our interlocal agreements where we can we can address some of these things. We're, we're, we're putting in three fourths of the right. short call. Right. And most of the 911 calls aren't from the outside the city limits. Come on. Mm -hmm. Do we need to discuss the fire truck too? Fire truck, yeah. So do we need to discuss the fire truck? I, I actually yeah. did discuss um, the fire truck with him, and um, and we will per, we they are are on board with sharing in the expense of the fire truck. Um, I, I, our discussion was that we are going to. Les and I will have more information for them as far as what the actual payments, annual payments will be, if they wanted to make a lump sum payment for their half, what it would be, so forth. And, and, and Kenton uh, indicated that, that they were fine with that and, and that it can be presented at a commission meeting and, and he did not see any problem with it. Okay. So, um, and we're also, I, I don't know if it'll happen today, because of the weather, but we were um, we were meeting. Les and I are supposed to meet with with a, a lady today to dis to discuss possible grant money for a fire truck. So maybe we we'll, might be able to save some money there. We'll see. But good. anybody, magistrates, have anything to add? I just want. Thank the road crew for what all they're doing in the last few days. <laughs> yeah, especially in state for what they're doing. The jail. Trying the to make in the jail. jail. The jail getting our parking lot and, and, yeah. and sidewalks cleaned off this morning. And the uh, and, uh, local individuals. Oh, yeah. Local, right yeah a lot of farmers out helping, too. One sitting in here. <laughs> <laughs> You've been greeting the roads, too. <laughs> Does. <laughs> Anybody? I if they're done, I, I just have one slight, very short. Are y'all, anybody else? No. Um, I'm, as the judge knows, I've cornered him before the meeting. The They're trying to have in the next few days closing on the Titanium Metals project the, to try to get that started construction on that. They gotta get money lined up first as you all know and so I've been working with Mr. Leach who is the 
industrial authorities, attorney, and so we should have documents. Judges sign what the ones we're supposed to sign. Of course, city ought to sign some on their behalf, and industrial authority ought to sign some. But that that seems to be going forward and should close very shortly. Just to let y'all know what's going on with that. I think they have a closing date of either the 18th. Or I think it's right right now it's scheduled for Thursday. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, we're, as you all know, closings. You know, sometimes you know a hard closing turns into a soft closing. You know, closing and then it gets moved. And I don't think that's going to happen. But I'm just saying you know, that's what it's set for currently. It was originally set for today, and now it's Thursday. Does anybody else have anything? Do we need to do that cell tower? Cell tower? That was just for just for information. It wasn't uh, for a pr they just no they notified us. So if you have any questions, somebody in your district, it's actually this last one is is in Blake's and my uh, Middleton. Uh, it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. I was trying to figure out exactly where it's it was. Really yeah, I think the Westmore property. Well, that's around. Jefferson owns some property around here in the Westmore. Yeah. Yeah. Bill? I was just going to report that uh, I met with the Parks Board the other night and uh, kind of gave them a proposal of what we need to be doing out at the park, and they, they approved it, so we'll be moving on with that. Uh, I'll, have, I'll get with Nicole. I'm not sure how all that money stuff works. <laughs> I'll find out from the poll how we need to do that before, because I do want to get uh, more, you know, a second bid now on all the items and then. But they approved to go ahead for me to move ahead. Could we get a list of what they're going to do? Yeah, we've got. I, it. Have, I have got a list. It. Bill's, got he, it. Bill's got it. He did a Bill did a super. I know you did that detailed report, but I mean, <laughs> just a list of which bathrooms they're going to rebuild. And I, I mean, I don't know, need to know. Everything they're going to do. I got a detailed list. Just a list of what they're actually going to do. I got a detailed list for each restroom. Each one of them is different. Well, I, I knew that, but I didn't. You know, I don't. I don't need to see all that. I just, you know, I'd like to see just a list of uh, of which buildings or or whatever that they're actually going to. Well, we're going to we're going to work on the little league, the pee wee, and the tennis court, and we're going to tear down the uh, grandstand or multi-purpose area when that was completely coming down. So is that? That's all they have on the schedule right now is those buildings. Okay. Well, that, well, that's the yeah. only, only thing I'm dealing with now. I don't know about the rest of the money because when now, we talk, they take care of all the money. That, I mean, no, sure, no. sure there'll be money that, left that over. That came up to 58000 Okay. About 25% of that. the estimates that Bill's got right now. Okay. I mean, and it was, a, he did a super job. It was making them all handicapped, frost free, that's right. That's right. stainless steel fixtures. I mean, it's, First class job. Now, he, he did a good job. Is, is that little is that little league year? No, it was last year. Was it last year? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. They also we also discussed a little bit about Dewey's constructing the road that we talked about going around by the behind the soccer fields. Uh, they're going to come back with an estimate of what they thought that might be. And also, they thought they were going to be able to rock that upper parking lot at the Little, little League Field. So, just to give you an update of what was discussed, is that was pretty well the discussion of what was going on. The, the upper parking lot at the Little League Field, are you, are you talking about the, like left field where a lot of people park anyway out there? Are they, is that going to be leveled up and, and Leveled a little and then rocked and hopefully at some point blacktop, but at least for the time being now it was just going to be rock. Hopefully we get that done before spring. Yeah, I was going to say. Since we've closed that road, that that'll probably be a more frequently used parking lot than driving to the bottom until we get that access road built around to the right. But yeah, I was just kind of concerned that if we just kind of went in there and put some rock, uh, you know, and <coughs> out there in that left field, that it would It'd be pretty sloping. Yeah, it needs. It's going to have to be leveled up. And the further you go towards center field, the more sloping it yeah. gets. So. And kind of, yeah. Usually, wasn't going to be a lot. Right. But it was 
They won't be. be <coughs> people won't park in it anyway. They still park in the grass. <laughs> but the uh, the one concern I had with that was spending spending a lot of money on that parking lot and the out there and, and the the. When I was coaching down there, usually if it was too wet to park out there, we weren't going to play ball anyway. Yeah, it, I mean, I think it was laid out happily with a number of bills, 118 parking places. Yeah, I wasn't for sure on the parking. I can't put involved sure in that at all. Spots, but it was almost the size of what's down in the bottom. Okay, so it's so a pretty good sized spot. It'd be a yeah. pretty good size okay. parking. Well, it's all you, there could never be enough parking down there because there was that was always a struggle to find a spot. <coughs> Les, you got any? Uh, or I get to take it. Yeah, what about you got anything for us this morning besides it's snow? It's cold outside, <laughs> <laughs> <It's cold laughs> <outside. laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> It's going to get colder too. Uh, yep, it's supposed to be below, uh, wind chills below zero tonight. So take care of your pipes and your pets and your livestock and your elderly and the young. Had my son put out hay yesterday afternoon. I will take a short break and then we have to come back. Les has got an executive session. Um, so I need a motion to adjourn. Or, you need to get out your drawer and just read oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I have a second session, but you want to go? Oh, well, do we, don't we take a break? No, you usually you go, you vote to do it and take, once yeah. the oh, successful yeah. vote, right. then you take a short break. So, um, well, well, I need about five minutes. I mean, it's Blake and who else? Uh, so, I'll what is, is, uh, subject to, uh, subject to tariffs. What is we talking it's about? The is it personnel? Personnel. personnel? Okay. The Subject to 61.810. Um, exception to the open rule, open meetings rules. The to discuss or the hearings section. which might yeah. lead to the appointment, <laughs> discipline, or dismissal of an individual employee. Who is the second? Marty. Marty. Like <laughs> yes. Marty Chandler. Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. James Peters? Yes. Now we're going to recess. Now I'll move we're going to take a recess.